It doesn't matter how fast or how slow. As soon as I press the keys in, then it's going to input those notes. Um, now it it um, it uh, in inputs the the duration of the notes depending on which uh, value that I've clicked here. So if I want a quarter note instead of sixteen notes, those are all sixteen notes. I can do the quarter note and then input some notes, and out comes the input notes. So you can see this is, this can be really handy. This is kind of similar to how Finale does it, but I think this is, is a little bit faster than Finale because you don't have to press any numbers. You just press what the value you want, and you press the notes on the keyboard, and it's ready to go. Okay, so that's step input. Um, you can also oh you want to you want to click this red button to turn that thing off. Um, you can also see if I just play some stuff. If you go to the score editor, you see the pedals here. Uh, if you click on this button right here, or when you have the piano roll, click on this button. This is this shows your pedals in this menu. Uh, I'll talk about this hyper. This is called the hyper draw. I'll call, talk about this a little later, but this this in the piano roll this just shows where your pedals are hitting and you can change those you can move them around and this shows where your pedal is hitting but when you want to print stuff off you probably don't want to have the pedals there so you can just highlight them all and delete them and they're gone okay um, let's open up let's open up another file um, What's kind of nice is if you have multiple instruments, you can you can see them in this score editor. Um, this project is was something that I worked on uh, making music for the library. They I imported some Finale files and uh, used the East West Orchestral Library to make them sound a little better. And this is what we got. Let me just resize this. Okay. So those are using some of the better orchestral sounds. Now if I press N, go back to the score editor, this is for all the instruments. But if I press this arrow key, I can see all the instruments at the same time. So let me moving this cursor around with my mouse wheel if I press this blue button while it's going then it will kick back to this playhead this this cursor this that we've been talking about this playhead it will kick back to it so so you see how that works um, if I press the page view in the orchestra view um, Sometimes it, it gets a little bit uh, crowded, and so all the instruments don't fit on the page. That's because I, I haven't resized the page and all the, all the instruments, but that's why it looks a little bit weird on the page view. Okay, now if I want to print this, all you got to do is press Command P, press OK, and then I assign which printer I want it to go, and I press Print. Second option is if I want to save it to a PDF, click on this, click Save as PDF. Let's say my song, uh, save it on the desktop, and then take a look. And now it is a PDF ready for someone to read. Okay, so that's that's it for the score editor. I hope that was. Uh, hope this makes a lot of sense. Uh, this is this is Logic is just an awesome program. And uh, the score, as you can see, the score editor just makes things so much simpler. Um, okay, now let's move on to the tempo. Um, now, if you press G, this will be the global tracks. Pressing G will, will do the global tracks, and you can see 
you not only have tempo, you have some other things. You have signature and marker. If you press Option G, you'll get you'll see where those things come from, and you can you can put more things in here. Uh, let's just focus on signature and and tempo. So just get rid of marker, press Done. Now, normally your tempo is right here. You can uh, you can click and drag it. You can double click it. You can change it to say 90, put it back to 120. Um, but you can also change, you know, if you wanted to go slower, faster in time, press two, get your pencil tool out, click some points, and then click and drag where you want the tempo changes. Uh, this is really handy. Now you can make curves. Th that's what these these purple points are. You can make curves so it's not so rigid. But you can't make curves at the beginning of this change. It has to be on the on the back end of it. Um, it's that's just how it is. Um, and then let's see. And then there's a thing called time code. And so there's a difference between time code and barcode. If you take a look at these numbers up here, these are all measures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are all measures with and we're in 4-4, four, four, so 4 beats a measure. Um, this this number this number on the left, that is the big numbers. The next number are increments of 4, the smaller uh, divisions, and then it gets smaller and smaller. So if you take a look, now I measure 2, now we're on measure 3, and now we're on measure 4. So that's how it works. Um, the numbers above, well, no, let's talk about this. Okay, project end, that's 130. That means that way down here, measure 130 is where this, this box, this shows you where the end of the song is. So you can kick this up if you want to make the song shorter. This is where the song officially ends um, at that thing. 4-4 um, four, four is obviously, you can change it to, let's say you want to do 3-4, double click it, press 3. Now, notice that up here it's changed to 3-4. Now I can double click this and say, okay, I want 2-4. So now it's back to 2-4, it's 2-4 down here. If I want to change uh, over here, I want to change to 3-4 over here. Get a pencil tool, click, and I'll change to 3-4. So that's changed right there. Um, now, oh, the, now the difference between the, the uh, barcode and SMPTE, which is real time, minutes, seconds, hours. Minutes, seconds, hours don't change at all. Bar, w what changes is the stuff around it. So this is just easily minutes, seconds, and time that's going. If you press U, you can see it up here now. Um, you can see it as the time goes by. Now, it's kind of an interesting thing. I'm going to go over here and let's say, okay, here's, 50, uh, here's 20 seconds right about here. And if I change the tempo, to make it much faster. Where watch where 20 seconds goes. 20 seconds just got kicked out. Okay, if I if I change it to be much much slower, watch where 20 seconds goes. 20 seconds is like right in here. That's because, for example, when when the tempo is going really slow, the playhead, this cursor thing is going very very slow, and so it's so the the real time is almost scrunched down the real time it really is not scrunched down but on, on the display it's it's scrunched down on the in the reverse when I make this really fast the real time is extended not that the real time actually changes because the real time doesn't change what changes is the playhead going faster so so this playhead extends it goes faster so the the real time extends in its display Okay, so that's a that's a very very important concept, especially because audio and movies work exactly the same. When you're working with audio, and you're when you're working with movies, they never change themselves. The tempo around it can change, and how they're displayed on your screen can change, but their actual timing doesn't actually change. Okay, let's talk about the event list. This event list doesn't have anything on it because I haven't recorded anything so let me re-record re something. Here we go. Okay, now I don't also have an instrument playing so let me load up an instrument. There we go. Okay, 
Okay, so if I press E, I go back to the event list. The event list just shows me all the regions and all their notes and all their details. It tells me where it's at, whether it's a note, whether it's a pedal, how long I played it, how hard I played it, all that stuff. Uh, I don't really use it very often. Uh, I've only had to use it maybe a few times when I've had to work with projects where someone messed up a bunch of automation and I had to go in and delete it. But besides that, I never use this, this function. Uh, as you can see, it's just a list of, of uh, stuff that's going on with the tempo, the tempo changes. Take a look, when I press play, you get a little mini playhead coming scrolling down. You see it scrolling down? Uh, signature is also a list of the different signature changes. You got a 2-4, and then you have a 3-4. Uh, you also have uh, the key of D. So that's uh, that's what that's about. If I press Option G again, I can see uh, I can put the marker function back in. Marker is just a way of, of writing down your own notes. So if I press Create right there, then I can type in whatever I want. If I want to make another note right here, I say, OK, I want to have drums here. And then when I press G to get rid of that, you can still see the, the uh, marker and it's where it's at. OK, well, let's talk about the uh, key signature now. Um, key signature works the same way as the time signature. If I want to change it, uh, I press 2, click on where I want to change it, say I want to go to B flat. And then from then on, it's, that's B flat. Um, now, let's take a look at, at loops and how that works. Um, if you press O, you get loops. Let's, um, let's pull up Melodic. something funky uh, let me pull this in okay there's a couple changes and I'll explain why first of all when I play this in here okay don't don't think about that okay we're back to that sorry Okay, where my cursor is right now, it's in it's in the key of B flat, so it's playing in the song key. That is what it's referred as the as to as the song key. Notice that this is G, it says G. That's the original key. So when I click on original key, then it'll play in the key of G. The third option is to click in here, and I can play it in any key I want. So back to this play in original key or song key. If this is Oh, here, let me let me play it. If this cursor is over here, we're in the D D section. It's played in the key of D. Um, now there's it's a little bit confusing. Uh, I think it might be a glitch between where you play it and where you where you uh, drag it in. I'm not exactly sure how this works yet, but um, uh, sometimes it's a little confusing. You know, you might you might hear it. A certain key, and then you pull it in in a certain area, and 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 uh, it's not exactly the one you thought. Um, uh, I was just reading up on it, and I haven't really figured it out yet. But um, just just be cautious, um, aware of that. But I think this should be fine. You know, if you know what this function is, you know what it's playing in, and you know how you can change it. Uh, the second thing is the tempo. Um, depending on where this cursor is, is the tempo it's going to be playing at. So. Here we have it playing at the playheads at 187. If I move the cursor to 133, then obviously it's playing at a slower tempo. Now this, let's let's go to where I just put it in. Now we're going to hear this and see how the loop changes tempo as the song tempo changes. 